on this edition of Penn State Access Granted. A doubleheader, men's and women's gymnastics go one-on-one. -on -one. Find out what it takes to be a wrestler. And a look back at a magical season of women's volleyball. All right, Sherrick, men versus women, who would win? Would it be close? In a volleyball match? A, a, I'm not certain. A death battle. A death battle. I mean, on the volleyball court, I, I don't know if you remember, but last year we talked about uh, whether or not Will and Maddie could take on the whole women's team. Two versus six. Yeah, and I, I still believe that they could. I fully believe that. Uh, so I think six on six. I think we could handle them. Might be the only thing we agree on. <laughs> Maybe. Besides that, we are definitely head. better than Everyone them. agrees on that potato head. Nah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> they said that all the time last year, and we would argue all the time in the training room, and that is not true. Two people against six. I'm sorry. I don't care what they did. No. Yeah. Wouldn't no. happen. Uh -uh. Wouldn't happen. Would not happen. Would not happen. <laughs> <laughs> not happen. No way. Come on. Bring it. We'll bring it this summer. Yes. That's right. We're, we're We've already it. beaten them in the summer before. Yeah, We've played true. with them. This is no. true. This is shenanigans. Girls net, guys net. We're done with that. <laughs> For the second consecutive season, the Penn State women's volleyball team won the national championship. But it was a truly special year because of the number of sets they won in a row, and a truly special year because they're back-to-back -back national champions. We sat down with the head coach of the Nittany Lions, Russ Rose. One of the things you had talked about in the preseason was do you want to convince your team it's a new year, that you're not defending anything. So do you think at some point you could see that message was getting through that it was a new year, a new team, and a new way of going about things? At the beginning of the year we, we talked about what, what my vision was for, for this group to be able to set the bar higher than people have been before, that they had all the talent. Uh, they, they just had to make a commitment to each other to really work hard and if they could do those things that uh, I thought they could actually do what they did and that was go out there and not lose any games. You've always had your way of coaching. In any way did you sense because it was a veteran group that you made any, that you adapted at all? Well certain things I adapted but not, you know, not what I believe uh, are the basic principles of wanting to, wanting to be successful and that is you have to work hard every day and you have to be accountable and responsible for your preparation and your effort on a day-to-day -day basis and you can't assume that you can just flip a switch and be great on on the weekend so you know I had a number of battles with a number of people and you know I'm sure I could have just uh, ignored it because they were very good and we hadn't and, you know you could we could have lost games and still won matches and won the national championship but I really thought the group had the potential to do something and I was willing to fight for it. Nebraska you win the first two, everyone knows they win the next two. You get to the fifth one, you close out on a seven to one run. What did your team show you as a coach at that moment? You know, we were, we were hitting 400 after the first two games, so I thought we were playing great after the first two games. The next couple of games, uh, you know, the third game got away from us. Uh, the fourth game, we had some windows to get back in and could have could have won the match and, and didn't do what we needed to do. And then, you know, we were winning the fifth game, then losing, uh, you know the fifth game, and then we're you know we're you know losing 10-8, and uh, you know get kind of hot at the end. And you know I mean they were fighters, and you know they they knew what they had to do to be successful. So we could have just as easily lost the match as won the match. But uh, you know I, and I think Nebraska was a good opponent, but the but the environment far far exceeded you know the scouting report that we had on Nebraska. Stanford. Just, like, just the the night itself. Just playing them. They're across the net again. I mean, how well did the kids play, especially Megan? I thought Megan played great. You know, she played great the last month of the season. I thought she really took it to a different level the last month of the season. But you know, we're we're familiar with playing Stanford, not just in the national championship matches because we've we're th we've won three and lost one in the finals with them, but. Our players have played them a number of times. We have a great deal of respect for Stanford. Both teams want to win, and you're going to do the best you can. And uh, you know, I, I felt that, uh, as I felt last year, I felt we could win. Do you take any enjoyment during the course of the season, or is it just a mere focus of what is next? For me, it's what's next. So, you know, and then the season ends, and you're like, okay, now what? And everybody's like, boy, I bet you're real excited. And I'm like, 
you know, I was, I was less excited. I was more depressed that, you know, I wasn't going to have the chance to work with the seniors anymore. You know, I'm, I'm sure in hindsight, in the end, we'll be able to look back on it and there'll be a lot of things that talk about the greatness of the 2008 uh, Penn State women's team and we'll all take pride having been a part of that. When did you start thinking about 2009? Personally, I think about 2009, uh, you know, about an hour or two after the match. Coming up as Penn State Access Granted continues, we will look back at the Rose Bowl. And men's gymnastics goes one-on-one. -on, -one. on the next episode of Courtside with Coquise, the Lady Lions take on Big Ten opponents. Outlet pass through O'Rourke, O'Rourke to Williams. Williams against Boylan, lays it up and in. Go to school with Basketball 101 and tag along with the team as they hit the polls on Election Day 2008. The Lady Lions rock the boat. All that and more on the next episode of Courtside with Coquise. Josh, no question, question number one. <laughs> what it, What is the toughest part of training and competing in gymnastics? Injuries. Uh, they set you back uh, a long way. Right now I'm battling a uh, bicep uh, strain, which is, you know, which is frustrating, especially at the beginning of the season, because you want to start the season off, you know, you know with a bang, but that's going to have to start a few weeks later for me. What is your favorite event? It is high bar. Uh, not because I get the highest scores, because I have the most fun in high bar. I feel like I'm, uh, and I can uh, express myself, <laughs> so to speak. What is yours, Josh? <laughs> My favorite event is watching you on high bar. Oh, okay. <laughs> it gets my heart racing, man. You're young. You swing on the edge. What event takes the most concentration? Which takes the most physical strength? That's a two-part question. The most concentration, I would say pommel horse. I find it the most hardest event, not because it's physically hard. You have to concentrate. You can fall on the first skill that you do if you're not concentrated enough. You need to be concentrated all through the routine because every little thing can just make you fall. The pommel horse can literally just throw you away from it. Um, it's not physical as, as mental. The most physical is obviously rings. For me, the way to work on rings is mostly work on my strength all through the year and hope I'll be strong enough by the, by the time season starts to, to just make the routine and, you know, technique and, and other things like dismounts. It's kind of like a bonus <laughs> after. If you can do the strength, then yep. yeah. If you, if you can do two flips and land on your feet, it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the best all-around athlete on the team? Who could play any sport? OK, Casey Sandy, best all-around gymnast on this Agreed. team. Hands down in the country. I think he could do it again. Yeah. Uh, all-around athlete playing other sports. Uh, sports in the United States, Alan Harris. Alan Harris, you think? Alan, I think Alan Harris can. Is, Cody Carnahan's pretty good too. You're just thinking football. That's your no. I'm problem. no. I'm thinking ba like baseball. What are other American sports? What about soccer? Huh? Well, that the is, real football. Okay. Who Casey, can play that? Casey Sandy. Casey Sandy. He can speed skate too. <laughs> he can speed. He skate. can also do the uh, what's the what's the curling. What's the, curling, yeah. Those those Canucks are uh, you know they're crazy. crazy. <laughs> what is the best part of competing for Penn State? Um. Well, I think two things. One is uh, the crowd. A lot of people, for me, it was really impressive. When I first started competing here, I wasn't um, used to having so many people cheering for me. The other thing is the teammates um, really supporting, really help going through routines, going through um, emotions. For me, it's really fun. It's something I've never had before. Well, I'm really excited to come back, you know, and I'll 10, 20 years down the line when we're not in shape anymore, we're fat and stuff, and <laughs> come back and have, like, I guess, war stories, you know, yeah. about our time here. You know, oh, here. we have stories. Oh, we, we do get, have we stories. We do have stories. <laughs> what are you most proud of in your time at Penn State? Hmm. Well, I tell you what, I, I'm really proud of the friendships and the family that I've made here. You know, our success here, that, I mean, that was sweet, but I think the more important thing was, you know, the, you know, the life experiences we got here while, you know, while we were competing, you know, for Penn State. I'm Etora Coleman, and this is Basketball 101. Today we're going to talk about ball handling. 
and here to help me is Emily Phillips. We're gonna use two balls for this drill. And the reason why we're gonna use two is because if you can master dribbling with two balls, then it'll be that much easier dribbling with one. The first drill we're gonna do is Emily's gonna dribble with her left hand low, right hand high, and then she'll, she'll switch it to right hand low, left hand high. The next drill that we're gonna do is Emily's gonna keep the ball with her left hand in front of her while dribbling around her right leg with her right hand. Once she completes two rotations, she will then switch to the other side. Notice while she's dribbling, her eyes are up on the goal. We teach our players to look down the court every time because somebody might be open. And that's Basketball 101. Coming up as Penn State Access Granted continues, women's gymnastics goes one-on-one. -on -one. Who do you think is the most flexible on the team? Oh, well, I would have to say this is embarrassing myself. <laughs> I agree. Hi, Al. Hey, Al. Uh, who on the team do you think is the funniest or the team clown? The funniest person I would have to say would be you because... Lovely. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait. Stein. <laughs> Stein. Stein wins. I think because so. Because she could do a beam routine perfectly and then the next one she could be falling off the side and she's like, it's okay, guys. I would have to say Casey. Casey? I look over and she's like dancing <laughs> to the music. We're like, okay. <laughs> so, What is the hardest part of training and competing for you in gymnastics? Uh, the hardest part is keeping up your confidence on days that you have, like, not the perfect day that you want to have. So you just have to keep <laughs> your head focused and strong and uh, believe in yourself that it's going to work out. I agree. What is your favorite event, Al? My favorite event, although it's not my best event, uh, is floor. I like to dance and present myself. Uh, my favorite's beam because, I don't know, I feel confident up there and I like the skills I can do. Yeah, kind of, she just, you know, chucks a layout loud and <laughs> like it's nobody's business. Um, what is the best life lesson you've learned from doing gymnastics? I'd have to say that everything happens for a reason and if you believe in yourself, even when a lot of people don't, you can make anything happen. And you did that just with your back. And right. You didn't care what anybody said, you know, yeah. certain people. Mm -hmm. So I'm proud of you for that. Thanks, Al. Um, what is the best part about competing for Penn State? The best part is that we have a billion people watching us. You know, some teams don't have as much support. And, uh, you know, alumni. Yeah, alumni coming back. We have an alumni meet this year. So that's going to be fun. Um, basically, the best part is knowing that there are so many people out here that you know are Support supportive us. of us. Yeah. And people what who are always when there. We put on our blue and white. And blue and white. It's the best feeling ever. Yeah. So we I think we scare people, but <laughs> anyway, it's okay. <laughs> what is your best memory within the team? Like funniest moment, or serious, scary? When I scare you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'd have to say when we go to Woodward and we spend the afternoon and night together and it's just the team and we're just like talking about the season and getting ready and it's like team bonding, we play funny games and like everyone's just themselves and it's relaxed and it's, we just have fun. I would have to agree. What are you most proud of in your time at Penn State? Uh, I'm most proud of the fact that through all of the ups and downs and you know, hard times when you thought you just couldn't do it anymore. Uh, I stuck with it. I knew that, um, you know, it would always pay off no matter how it was. If it was that day or the next day or in three years, it was going to pay off. So I'm just proud for sticking with it and believing in myself and believing in everybody around me to help make Penn State what it is. And what are you most proud of? I'm most proud that I came back after my back. And I think the hardest part was believing in myself that I could do it.
because I didn't know how it was going to feel. Or And there's so many people telling you you right. weren't going to be able to do it again. So, and coming back was hard because, like, everything was harder. But um, I just pushed through, and I had a lot of support from coaches and you guys. You guys were the best. I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> <laughs> For the 120th time, the Tournament of Roses Parade stepped off in Pasadena, and for the 95th time, the Rose Bowl game was played, and for the third time, it involved Penn State. A special thrill happened with the 57th unit of the parade, the Penn State Blue Band Marching. It also featured the B-2 stealth bomber that flew over the parade and then over the Rose Bowl after the national anthem. With 35,000 to 40,000 Penn State fans in attendance, the Rose Bowl felt like Beaver Stadium West. In the end, USC won the game, but the experience was still special. So Pat, you're from Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Was Penn State always your first choice? What about the school attracted you to Penn State? Um, well, it wasn't always my first choice, but it's always been in the back of my head ever since I've been growing up. Now, of course, being from Pennsylvania and outside of Philly, I've always been a Penn State fan. And uh, so it was during my recruiting process, you know, Penn State just happened to be top, going to my top choice. So. so you spend a lot of time here at the natatorium. How about how many hours a day would you say you're here? Oh, um, typical week, I'm here from, well, I'm here, I'm here usually about five hours a day, I would say. About an hour and 45 minutes in the morning and then two and a half sometimes in the afternoon. That's pretty intense. Do you have any ways of winding down after practice that you like to just relax? What's your favorite thing to do? Uh, usually I'm kind of a laid back guy, so I just go back and just chill on my computer and stuff. But I don't really have too many hobbies. Swimming kind of takes up all, takes up all my time. I can imagine. Now with the swimming regimen, working out all the time, and I can imagine you need a lot of calories. Do you have a favorite spot downtown that you like to go eat? Uh, well, I'm a big waffle shop fan. And, uh, you know, some nights on college pizza, and um, I got McClanahan's food, stuff like that. I don't have like any like type of hot spot, but besides Waffle Shop, we'll do like every Saturday morning, we'll go to the Waffle Shop downtown after a Saturday morning workout. So, what would you say the best part about being a student athlete at Penn State is? Best part? Uh, I would say, for, for me, really, it's social scene. You know, when I came here, I already automatically had brothers here on the team. So, and just getting to meet a whole lot of people and then meeting alumni also has been an you know, incredible experience. We have alumni meets and everything where they come back and we'll compete against them. And then, you know, we'll get to know them a little bit afterwards. Your favorite stroke is backstroke. I yes. know that's what you won your championship in. What do you look at? Do you look at a point on the ceiling or you keep your eyes closed? Are you looking behind you? Um, actually, I've never even thought about that before. Well, of course, the backstroke flags, they're here. So, you know, your stroke counts, you're not nailing into the wall every single time you do a turn. But uh, I don't know, I kind of just like look at my arm motion. <laughs> and you're a senior, so after you graduate, what's the one thing you're going to miss most about Happy Valley? About Happy Valley? Oh, I mean, there's always something to do. You know, you nev you're never bored. Like whenever I go home, my mom's probably going to kill me for this, but uh, I'm always kind of bored at home. <laughs> so in Happy Valley, there's always something to do, always somewhere else to do something. Coming up as Penn State Access Granite continues, what does it take for a wrestler to be at the top of their game? On the next episode of Courtside with Coquise, the Lady Lions take on Big Ten opponents. Outlet pass through O'Rourke, O'Rourke to Williams. Williams against Boylan, lays it up and in. Go to school with Basketball 101 and tag along with the team as they hit the polls on Election Day 2008. The Lady Lions rock the boat. All that and more on the next episode of Courtside with Coquise. Every sport takes a special dedication. Wrestlers are no exception. There is a passion in wrestling. It's not just a year-round commitment. For many, it's a lifelong commitment to try to be the best in their sport. You just have to be willing to commit yourself to wrestling all the time. It's really just a lifestyle. Um, being willing to sacrifice eating lots of food when you would rather be eating, especially in the holiday time, and uh, getting those extra workouts in and just pushing yourself to the next level at every opportunity. Wrestling is divided by weight classes. Getting to that lean, mean weight takes a lot of work. In wrestling, you gotta watch your weight, so, you know, it's the sacrifice you have to make. Run more and eat light. Coach probably wouldn't want to hear this interview, but I consume everything and anything possible. I just have to work out a lot. Well, I eat whatever I like to. Um, there's really no restrictions on that. Uh, 
my weight, I don't really have to worry about it like some of these guys. It's actually pretty awesome because I like though I see them struggling every day and I'm just like, man, glad that's not me. Wrestlers have to hit the weight. They need to take care of their diet so they can make weight and stay strong. But there's also rigorous training. Penn State, we train pretty much every day, maybe a day off here and there. During the week, we train once a day, but sometimes, you know, we wake up early in the morning, we'll have a run before lift. We'll train up to maybe sometimes three times a day. And it's, it's pretty hard, but eventually your body gets used to it. Uh, we, just, we just work out hard, man. We try to get um, the most out of all our workouts, things like that, just to stay in shape, keep our minds mentally focused on wrestling and, you know, just getting after it every day, making, you know, time worth it. The goal for every athlete is to improve. So, how does a wrestler get better? First thing you do is wrestle a lot of matches and then figure out what's working for you and what's not working for you. Then you want to sit down with, you know, coach wrestles your style or someone like that, guys on the team that are good and wrestle your style and figure out what's working for them and watch your film and see, you know, where you're making your mistakes at and things like that. Just to, you know, fine tune your sport and your, and your you know, your art so you, you have what you need to, you know, make it to the top of the podium. And always be pushing myself, always going as hard as I can, and really just having the desire every day to just not give up and just give that extra little bit to go the extra half a mile. Hello, I'm Dan Valamont. I'm a 157 pounder for Penn State wrestling team. My favorite class, probably uh, my architectural studio class. It actually, it's a lot of building design and uh, just a lot of getting to design your own buildings really and kind of conceptually build it. I really listen to a lot of everything, but I gotta say I love Bruce Springsteen because I'm from Jersey. There's some funny people on the team. Uh, John Lombrowni tends to be pretty funny. <laughs> Tyler Saltzman also tends to be very funny, and when those two are together, it's 20 times funnier than just those two added together. Coming up on the next edition of Penn State Access Granted, the men's volleyball team ranked number one in the nation goes to Hawaii for the Outrigger Classic. We'll get inside the mind of a goalie. And despite the snow on the ground, baseball goes through winter training. That's Penn State Access Granted on WPSU-TV, February 22nd at 5.30 p.m. On the next episode of Courtside with Coquise, the Lady Lions take on Big Ten opponents, go to school with Basketball 101, and hit the polls on Election Day 2008. Friday, January 23rd at 10 p.m. on WPSU-TV.